Welcome back to the Crypto's Key Conversation. We're going to quickly jump into uh, Digital Asset Investor's tweet here. It says, uh, it says, so we're going to be shocked at the SEC's behavior in the hidden Hinman documents. And we're also going to be shocked at the two hidden co-signers of SBF, Sam McMurphy's bail. The same Sam McMurphy the SEC was having planning sessions with. So then uh, he had put up this uh, image here of Brad Gollenhouse's tweet where it says, the SEC wants you to think that it cares about disclosure, transparency, and clarity. Don't believe them. When the truth eventually comes out, the shamefulness of their behavior will shock you. And then um, let me zoom out of here real quick and then come over here to this one. This is from uh, David Cat or David Shorts. Uh, Joel Katz says, "Prepare to be shocked," and it says, "Judge rules uh, identities of two parties who back Sam McMurphy, two hundred fifty billion, and you know the rest." Uh, Bell bond should be quite interesting as as things unravel here. Oh my goodness, what happened? Uh, continuing on here. The digital asset investor had put up these two clips. This one's about three minutes, and the other one's about fourteen seconds. And this is uh. Look who it is. Good old Joe Lubin here from Consensus, uh, one of the uh, founders, co-founders of Ethereum here. We're going to take a listen to this. He says, boy, this guy is um, singing a much different tune now that ETHGATE has been discovered. What happened to the cocky guy that was saying his SEC friends were doing a great job? Gary Gensler went ETH lawsuit, which I, we all know that he doesn't want you know ETH to be attacked. He doesn't want, uh, when I say he, I'm meaning digital asset investor, just like the rest of us. Like We don't want uh, Ethereum to be hurt. We definitely want justice. We want an investigation to find out who the ETH, uh, you know, the uh, ETH ICO wells are and all that stuff, all those all those hidden identities. Um, but when it comes to ETH as the digital asset being affected, we don't want that. We want the well-being on a level playing field for all digital assets, you know, that are trying to do the right thing and solve a real world problem, have true utility. But we're going to listen into this real quick. Regulation, just for a moment. A lot of news recently on the regulatory front, I think some of which... Uh, had people pretty alarmed. You know, the SEC gets the lion's share of the attention and the headlines, but um, it's no longer just the SEC. I mean, the CFTC going after members of a DAO, and what does that mean for governance tokens? Uh, you know, the SEC identifying, basically, we think almost everything other than Bitcoin looks like a security. What do you make of the current environment? And, you know, should it be concerning to everyone in crypto, or is there reason for optimism? Um. So it's concerning in that there continues to be uncertainty. Um, it's concerning in that the SEC uh, has chosen, has basically come to the conclusion that it's too early to write crisp rules. Um, and instead of doing that, they will, um, they will enforce uh, or, or um, regulate by enforcement actions, uh, so sort of um, punishing uh, bad actors who, who colored very significantly outside uh, um, lines that may not be so clear. Um, it, uh, I don't think it's really um, harmed innovation in the United States right now. Uh, I think the previous regime in the SEC and Gary Gensler's regime um, They've um, brought down a bunch of projects that uh, that were fraudulent. Um, um, and, you know, they've they have punished uh, some actors that were clearly uh, selling things that looked like uh, like unregistered securities to Americans. Um, and I think we would appreciate clearer rules, but uh, I actually don't think. Uh, America has been a bad place to uh, to be an innovative crypto blockchain company. There, there's one thing there I'd, I'd push back on, and just and, and, if, and if they make clear rules, look out because um, the excitement, um, the energy, the the money yeah. will go into the ecosystem. Yeah. Well, there's one thing there I'd push back on. You know, you say um, there's no clear rules, there's no clarity. What I'm hearing some people say recently is, you know, a different way of looking at it is there is clarity. It's just that we don't like the rules. And the clarity is, at least in the SEC's case, they're using the Howey test. It's from 1946. And so, those are the prongs. Yeah, that is Gary's uh, um, recent emphasis, it appears. Yeah. And, and so the Howey test, if rigorously applied, um, uh, well, Let's say the Howey test can still be subjective. If uh, if Gary and crew uh, wants to cast a, a massive net and uh, 
and interpret the Howey test uh, really broadly, then uh, that could be problematic for more projects, not all projects. What's quite interesting is, you know, for all of us that's been a part of this, um, you know, XRP Army and McFallen case and, you know, been dialed in with spreading the message of ETHgate and all that stuff, you know, trying to connect the dots, do research. Like we all can see the big distinction between the old Joe Lubin and the now. And the biggest thing that stood out to me was he's talking about, you know, if there's clear rules. But like, wasn't he just not too long ago talking about how the SEC and Gary Gensler are doing a great job and, you know, even when Jay Clayton and them were in there, you know, they did a great job and they're stopping all these bad actors and, you know, the, the rules are quite clear. Like, wasn't that what happened to all that talk? But now he's saying if there's clear rules, there goes the floodgates. There's going to be so much excitement and capital flood into the market. But now he's saying there's not the rules aren't clear. And when they do become clear, then it's over. It's going to be it's going to be euphoria like crazy. But then uh, this gentleman right here to the left from Decrypt says, we don't like the rules. I guess that's what you know. some of the sentiments have been. It's like, well, we don't like the rules because it doesn't apply to this new emerging technology. That's the cold part. You can't use the Howey test off of some prop, some land, some property, and some oranges. It just doesn't apply. Um, and then I think at the end how Joe Lubin's talking about, uh, well, you know, it's the Howey test can be subjective. It's like, whoa, where, where's all this coming from? Like now that, you know, ETH gate, you know, has, has surfaced and it, it, it's no secret now. You know, like, what What do you mean now that the Howie test can be subjective and he can cast his net and the SC can cast her net, you know, as wide as they want? It's crazy, man. These are the things that we've been talking about. What you know, hey, he, he's telling he's telling some some facts here. A, a lot of concern that we've had for, for years now. Uh, moving on. This is quick little 14 second clip. Let's take a quick listen into this. Uh, Digital asset investor says uh, crypto lend interest whistleblower alert you went after blackfly you went after nexo you threatened coinbase lend joseph lubin on 13123 bragging about his eat lending interest plans gary gensler has appears uh has appears congress new day coming question mark let's listen into this we'll aggregate uh, different protocols enable people to just um buy pay lend earn stake etc simplicity <laughs> higher level stuff yeah Higher level stuff, classified higher level stuff. Shameful, man. Uh, this is from Charles Gasparino says, per Howie, an asset that is sold becomes uh, security when the purchaser has a, quote, reasonable expectation of profits to be derived from efforts of others. What profits were XRP buyers of Ripple executive sales expecting from Ripple itself? Serious question as the SC case continues. So we just talk, Joe Lubman just hit on the head. It's like the Howie can be subjective. There isn't there isn't clarity. Things aren't quite clear as they claimed in the past. And currently, Chairman Gensler says it's quite clear. The rest of the industry is, is confused. They don't know how to operate. So when it comes to this Howey test, it just it's it's irrelevant. Um, and when it comes to XRP being a security, because of that, most of the purchasers had, had no idea. I think if anything more now, purchasers now have a better understanding of the connection between Ripple, uh, the company and XRP, the digital asset, just based off of the efforts of the community alone, spreading information. And then obviously, you know, the, the eyes and the light on litigation between Ripple versus SC. But I know when I purchased back in late 20, 2017, I had no clue. You know, I just looked at the top assets, did a little bit of research, and boom, I started buying. Just like the the most most of us that has purchased XRP in the past. Crazy man. Uh, this is from Bitcoinist. It says, if Ripple wins versus SEC XRP price could more than double. Here's why. So uh, there's been a couple different articles. Let me make sure that this wasn't it. Yeah, there's been a couple different articles that's been ta talking about this, and this is something that we can all just based on just the suppression of of uh, you know the digital asset XRP, uh, it not hitting its all time high over the past two cycles. Uh, you know all all those things. Uh, am I correct in that right? So two, the past you know obviously not partaking in the past cycle. Excuse me. In uh, its previous all time high being just under four bucks at three eighty. Like we we know that once the litigation happens, there's going to be, you know, some obviously some front runners that's going to increase the price. There's going to be uh, obviously some, you know, a lot of FOMO, a lot of euphoria. We could be in in, in, in the bull market at that time. There can be a lot of factors uh, that can really be a catapult for this digital asset. And to think more than double, I think double is, would be uh, um, that'd be like a worst case scenario, if you will. But that's still huge. But, you know, a lot of people have been talking about that. You know, I try not to speculate on price too much, but I definitely expect whenever uh, there is a win, an uh, outright win for Ripple versus SEC, XRP, the digital asset, will, will more than double easily. 
Uh, this is from uh, Riz XRP. It says over half of Ripple's transactions go through XRP. Now, this is huge. Really listen into this. You know, well over half of our total transaction volume, because we do have a fiat and XRP enabled product called on demand liquidity. Over half of all of our transactions go through XRP now. Over half of all of our transactions go through XRP now. That has grown. And so, again, I, we're continuing to sign more contracts, more customers. And then the co contracts and customers we have have grown, partly because we open more corridors, more currency pairs. And so there's kind of a, a, a nice series of building uh, a vir positive virtuous cycle. You know. So what do you think is going to happen? I mean, that, that, that just goes into what we were just talking about now. Like, what do you think is going to happen when it's not just a speculative market anymore, right? When true utility and use case is actually driving the market and, and, and then, you know, the markets and the, uh, the people within the markets are, uh, you know, setting these new, uh, I guess you could say evaluations or, you know, the, uh, the value of these assets go up because of them solving real, real problems and having true use case and utility. I mean, what do you think is going to happen? Over half of the transactions just for the Ripple company itself, and they're continuing to expand, build partnerships with businesses, banks around the world. As he says, opening more corridors from uh, different currency pairs. What do you think is going to happen? They, there's a lot of conversation of, um, uh, for, why am I blanking on the term right now? Um, if it comes back to me, I'll, 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 I'll say it. I'm forgetting the term, but long story short, like if it just captures just a certain fraction or percent of, you know, you could say just global transactions, right? Obviously, that's what they're striving for. It, this is just one facet of what they're trying to do, cross-border remittances and all that. Like if they just capture just a small percentage, I mean, that pr the price of XRP alone, the digital asset, is going to be huge. There's so much happening within the XRP and XRP ledger world. It's amazing. And I'm excited to see what the future holds. Um, coming over here, this is from Watcher Guru. It says, just in Berkshire, Berkshire Hathaway's Charlie Munger urges the U.S. government to ban crypto. Oh, boy. So right here, <laughs> Charlie Munger right here says, a billionaire investor and uh, staunch Bitcoin skeptic Charlie Munger has gone after crypto again, calling for U.S. to follow the footsteps of China and ban crypto. <laughs> so this, this gentleman is, uh, you know, you could say the wingman or the ne the next up or right hand man, however you want to say it, to Bill Gates here. And uh, obviously, this is just the, the the same narrative, just a different time period. And if you've been in this market for any, I would say, what the past four or five years, like this is it's like okay, same old cycle, same old stuff, trying to scare people away. Okay, cool, whatever. Merely interesting, but I think it stuff like this just makes me more bullish. That's that's the reason why I put it up here. I think it's quite interesting. Um, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. I'm not going to insult this gentleman. Uh, this is Stuart Alderati right here. It says, uh, first of all, this says, turn cash into crypto. It says, uh, why America should ban crypto. And uh, Stuart Alderati, this is Ripple's general counsel here, says, wait, it's not April Fool's today. Adding this to the list of the most ludicrous things I've read in a long time, that the U.S. should ban crypto to be more like China. <laughs> Absolutely, man. It's crazy. Let's come over here and look at uh, CoinGecko really quick. We're currently sitting at a, uh-oh. A $1.118 trillion market cap. Bitcoin sitting at 23568 Ethereum sitting just under uh, 1650 XRP sitting at 41 just uh, just under 42 or I guess it's 41 cents. Yeah, man, we're we're still in uh, greed here, sitting at a 60. Looks like we were in greed the past, well, last week, yesterday, and, and now. So we'll see. Obviously, we talked about Jim Cramer saying, oh, we're in a bull market, buy the dip. So who knows? Are we going to have a nice little sell-off coming up? Kind of wait and see, or is this thing gonna keep pushing up and, and get it uh, get higher in the greed indicator here? We'll see. Make sure you come to the Crypto is Key conversation YouTube channel. Subscribe, follow us on Twitter at Crypto is Key One. I really appreciate your support out there, you guys. With all that being said, stay strong out there. Be safe.